Hi, I'm really having a hard time with this last one. This is module 4C. In this one we talk about tortious interference with expectancy. Now this is kind of related to undue influence, but it's a little bit different. It does build on the materials in your casebook, so make sure that you've read those please. Tortious interference with expectancy is a tort. So we've mostly been talking about probate actions, which mean that we're talking about whether a will is valid or not. If a will is, is invalid, then the property gets disposed of some other way. Tortious interference with expectancy is different. In this case, we go after the person who exercised the undue influence and try to recover damages, just like we do in all tort actions. Okay, so in In Re Estate of Ellis, page 108, is a case about tortious interference with expectancy. Now Grace Ellis was 86 when she died and she had left no descendants. In fact, she was an only child and a single woman her whole life. She did have some distant relatives. We're not quite sure how distant. But she had made two wills. She was always a generous person. In her 1964 will, she gave everything to charity and then she executed a different will in 1999. 35 years between those two wills. So as I mentioned that 1964 will left everything to charity in particular to the Shriners Hospitals for Children. The organization evidently was unaware of this. Now if, if you leave a lot of money in your will to William Mitchell please tell us so that we will know to look for it someday. Okay, the 1999 will, 35 years later, left the whole estate, not to those distant relatives, but to her pastor, the Reverend James G. Bauman. And he did know about it. He especially knew about it because she had made large gifts to him during her lifetime as well. Her relatives, who would be the intestate heirs, thought they should inherit some of Aunt Grace's money. Um, and they brought a will contest, but they lost. As part of that lawsuit, Reverend Bauman introduced that old will into the record. And that's when the Shriners found out about it. Now my guess is he was trying to show, look, how could this be undue influence? There's not really that big a change in plans because she never meant to leave any of it to her family. That's my guess. It would be a, a good argument. In any case, Shriners now knows that they were beneficiaries under that old will and they would like to get in on challenging undue influence. Um, you know, they might be able to um, bring more resources to it than the, the relatives. In any case, it's too late for them to get in on that action. So in this lawsuit, they're trying instead to recover damages from Reverend Bauman. The analysis is similar to undue influence. If they can show undue influence or show something similar, what they're showing is tortious interference with expectancy. Um, but we're actually not going to get to the merits of that. The question here is just whether the statute of limitations should be the same. We have a statute of limitations for wills and you know we really want that because once an estate is closed, once we've probated a will, we've, we've put out a notice to creditors, we've put out a notice to all of the intestate heirs, we really want things to be done and uh, you know we don't want to have heirs coming back all the time and years from now saying oh no there was undue influence and I should get to have something. So probate has a fairly short statute of limitations. Does this tortious interference with expectancy action, should it have the same statute of limitations? Or if we make this one longer, would that kind of undo the point of having that short statute of limitations for probate? That's the question the court has to answer. Okay. Um, court says no, not the same statute of limitations and that means the tortious interference case is not barred and it can go forward. Now I don't know what actually happened after that. The case got remanded and I, I could not find a, a final resolution anywhere. But I did find out 
that Reverend Bauman filed for bankruptcy shortly after all of this. And one of the, the there is some litigation between him and Shriners, or, or Shriners and his bankruptcy estate. Um, they want their claim against him to be protected. So to you know to have one of have preference in bankruptcy over other claims, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they had won an award from him. So um, whether they did or not, I don't know. But that's tortious interference with expectancy. But here's my question. Shriners didn't know they were a beneficiary until that old will became part of a public record. And there was no obligation to notify them since they were not a current beneficiary and not an intestate heir. Should there be an obligation to notify beneficiaries of earlier wills just as you would notify potential intestate heirs? Right? This is, I mean, these are people who would have a, an interest in whether the newer will is actually valid. So do you think there should be? Um, and if they can show undue influence on the part of Reverend Bauman, should they be able to recover for the lifetime gifts as well as for the inheritance? Or should the lifetime gifts be treated differently? Post your answers on, this, on the discussion board. We're finished with this module. We've talked about undue influence, and uh, the key thing is that is somebody else's will has been substituted for the testator's. Even though the testator executed the will, they're not really doing what they would want to do. They're doing what somebody else wants them to do. Uh, the first requirement for showing undue influence is to show that there is a confidential relationship, and that shifts the burden of proof. It creates a presumption if that person in the relationship has benefited. In addition, there were a number of other factors. You should be able to go back and pull those out. Um, and we looked at tortious interference with expectancy, a related but different tort action that covers some of the same issues as undue influence, but allows recovery of damages from the beneficiary who exercised the undue influence. Um, and as we saw in a state of, of Ellis, the tort really is a separate tort claim, and so it's not subject to the probate statute of limitations. Okay, thanks for watching, um, and thank you for your patience as we got these videos finalized and, and um, published.